That Nessa. That Nessa. Woo! Hi, I'm Andre, and I'm a black nerd. And as you know, E3 2019 happened. I went to it, particularly to Nintendo. And so I want to talk about my experience at the Nintendo booth. Not only did I go to check out the booth, which is really cool, and to play the games, which is really cool. I also did a segment for Entertainment Tonight, which I never thought that would ever happen. I watched Entertainment Tonight for years. I interviewed Kit from Nintendo Minute, and then I did a little tour with ET Live. I'll put a link in the description so you can check out the video, but that was really cool. Thank you, Entertainment Tonight, for having me. And thank you, Nintendo, of course, for having me at the booth while I was there. Got to play some games and check out the booth itself. They said the booth was like the same size that it always has been, but it felt bigger to me. Maybe that was because Xbox wasn't beside them because they were up in the Microsoft Theater and Sony wasn't beside them because they just wasn't there. But I think it might be because it was sectioned off. So what they did was they had a Pokemon section, a Luigi's Mansion section, they had a Link's Awakening section and then like a general section for just gameplay. So the Pokemon section was really cool because it looked like a water gym advertisements with a crowd painted on it with screens everywhere some of the screens were big screens the only thing that was missing uh was a nessa cosplayer which i think i would have appreciated <laughs> i'm just saying that would have been cool just to add to the ambiance not for any other reason then they had luigi's mansion luigi's mansion felt like a theme park haunted house like you if you've ever been to disney parks and you went to the haunted mansion that's what the Luigi's Mansion section of the place looked like. They actually had a bellhop up front because it was supposed to be like the Haunted Hotel. They had these ghosts that would project off the walls. It felt like a theme park. They could use Luigi's Mansion's E3 presentation as an idea for that theme park that may or may not happen at Universal Studios in the near future. They had Link's Awakening, which wasn't really necessarily a section. It was just out there for display to play the game. But on top of the stands where you could play the game, they had these really cute dioramas. It looked like the actual game in real life. And I thought that was super adorable. They need to mass market that quick. But let's talk about the games. Let's talk about the games themselves. Luigi's Mansion might have been one of my favorite games to play the entire E3. I'm not even joking. The basics of Luigi's Mansion 3 felt the same. Luigi's got the poltergust on. He's walking around room to room trying to find those ghosts. But it just looked so good it was so detailed and so pretty and just being in that mansion and hearing that creepy music and luigi's all Ugh. so i wanted to specifically try out the different techniques that you can use luigi's mansion 3 so the whole suction cup things where he can like shoot out a suction cup and it has a little string on it and they can use the polar gust to pull it and that can pull like a barrel or a statue or something i got a little off a couple times but i eventually got the hang of it but dude that slam technique is fire. If you grab a ghost and you want to slam them and there's other ghosts around, you can like turn and actually slam the other ghost with the ghost you have caught. So you can actually do damage to the ghost you're slamming on top of as well as the ghost that you have caught. There was one time I found a secret room and in the secret room they had a treasure chest but inside that secret room they also had a yellow ghost and if you remember in luigi's mansion the yellow ghost they will start dropping money you can use a slam technique on those ghosts as well at a certain point it was like you can slam and i started slamming this ghost down and every time i slam him down money was coming out and i was like dang this is this is messed up but when you really think about it, luigi you are beating this ghost for his money and i was like dang luigi you are darker than expected my friend <laughs> yeah dude luigi's mansion 3 i'm all about it i love the guiji setup i didn't know how i was going to feel about that but i actually like how guiji can work in different areas and that was really cool so it's like there's certain spikes or something will pop up and you can't walk through it so you let guiji out but i think that's really cool it's going to obviously set up some cool puzzle elements the game just looks fun i only got to play it a little bit and they didn't have too much of the game to play there was supposedly a boss level that you can get to, but I never got to it because I was too busy just walking around exploring. But I just, I can't wait to get my hands on that game. They did not give a date for it. They just said it's coming out 2019. Pokemon Sword and Shield's got a date. Link's Awakening got a date. But Luigi's Mansion, at some point, so I'm really hoping it's not one of those things where they're going to end up moving it to 2020 because I think that this is a game I need as soon as possible. But maybe what they'll do is they'll pull one of those things where maybe they'll have like a Luigi's Mansion 3 Direct. And then like when they have the Direct, they just go... Boom, by the way, game's coming out like 
in two weeks or right now. Like, that'd be sweet. Oh, and I hope they make a Luigi Amiibo. First off, I hope they make a Luigi's Mansion Amiibo where he actually has the Poltergust on. And then I really hope that they make a Luigi Amiibo. I need that to happen. Like, a see-through green Luigi Amiibo would be so sweet. Then I play Link's Awakening. This, of course, is the remake of Link's Awakening from the Game Boy, which I have played a little bit of, but never completely finished. So I'm looking forward to playing this version. So because I haven't finished the game, I don't know how much of it is is the exact same from the original and how much of it is new but the game feels new it feels like a brand new game even though it's obviously a remake of a game that's already come out i've only got to play a little bit of it i got to travel as far as i could it was on time play so i think it could only play like 15 minutes or so before it would reset so i don't know if for some people it's gonna feel too similar like i don't know if you're really into the game if you might play this and go this is the exact same but just with different graphics but for anyone who's never played the original game or maybe dabbled in it this is a great opportunity to do it and now you get to do it on nintendo switch and having a Zelda game that you get to play in between the other Zelda games that I still haven't finished. I'll beat a Zelda game one day, I swear! And yeah, that little figure that they had on display for Link, that needs to be a thing you actually buy. I need it in my life. Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. And I know this is gonna be very tough for me to talk about because there are some hardcore Poke fans out there and every time I even try to dip my toe into the Pokemon waters, they're all like, ah, ah, Andre, but you haven't played the game since the beginning. Uh, I picked up a controller and I played some of the game, so therefore, I have first impressions. Ooh, that's how it works. So for E3, the only thing they had playable was the water gym. So you got to do this little puzzle thing while you're trying to figure out how to change all the different buttons to make water flow in different places so you can get past. That was really cool. I was like, all right, that's really neat little extra thing. The Dynamax, which is a special move that you can do to make the Pokemon grow. And then you just get this gigantic Pokemon just pops up and it's like, ready to fight. I love that part, except my Pokemon Pokemon got hit and shrunk while the other Pokemon that was fighting was still in Dynamax mode. Unfair fight. Um, I don't think that's fair. I did one battle where I was like, I'm gonna lose, I'm gonna lose because I was trying to figure out all the different types. Cause you know, I'm, I'm still a Poke novice, but I got to a point where I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. And I kept going and going and going. That little Wooloo saved the day. <laughs> Thank you, Wooloo. <laughs> Thank you for helping me win my Pokemon fight. Like I said, not a hardcore Poke person. So I'm still learning. I will say this. If this is supposedly the next generation like of the Pokemon legacy, um, whereas Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee were supposed to be like, oh, this is a remake of the original in a way, or like this is more of a starter set, whereas this new one is supposed to be like the new thing. I know I only played one part, I only played the water gym part, but I have to say felt pretty much the same. Like the way that I was deciding which Pokemon to use, how to fight, all that stuff, honestly felt no different than the gems that I did when I played Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. Now, that's the only part I play. When it goes to walking around town, caption Pokemon, I'm going to assume that's gonna be a little bit different because I don't know if they're gonna do the whole Pokemon Go thing. But I'm just saying like the feel of it, the, the art design, the way the game was played, just felt similar. That could just be how Pokemon games are in general and I just don't realize that. Or it could just be like, hey, maybe they were using Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee to be like, here's how the basics work. So now we're gonna give you those basics and then a little bit more extra. All I know is game felt similar to me as the Pokemon games I played in the past. And I like the ones I played in the past that I've been able to play. This one felt along the same lines. So it worked for me. You probably would know more than I would, but for what I could tell, it was typical Pokemon stuff for me. That doesn't make it bad. It's just, that's what it was. And I definitely appreciate the fact that you can play with a pro controller. I, I, look, I like Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, or I'm playing Let's Go Eevee. Being required to play with that, with the Joy-Con, it, it makes my hand tired. I'm just, I'm just being honest with you. There's only so much of that game I can play at one time that way. Being able to play Pokemon with the pro controller means I'm probably gonna play it more. Okay. So another franchise I've never played. You, you, The way I'm talking right now, you think I've never played a video game before. I played video games, I promise. They just all were 8-bit and 16-bit. I finally played for the first time a Marvel Ultimate Alliance game with Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. And now I am literally beating myself up. How have you never played this game before? Because it was freaking awesome. I don't know if the other games are like this, but oh my gosh. I freaking love this game. It's literally just four Marvel superheroes that you get to control and just go around and just beat stuff up like Ninja Turtles arcade style. And then every once in a while when you get your gauge build up, you can just unleash a special power or what I got to do, which I thought was really cool, 
if you get everyone ready to go, you can do like a four time attack, you unleash one character's special power, and then you switch to the second character, unleash their power, and the third, the fourth, and all four of them can use their powers for an ultimate combo power at the same time, and it was so freaking cool. Everyone's in this game. They got MCU Marvel, they got Fantastic Four Marvel, they got X-Men Marvel, they got Defenders Marvel. So in the demo alone, I got to play with Spider-Man Peter Parker, Spider-Man Miles Morales, Deadpool, Thor, Iron Man, Captain America, uh, Captain Marvel, um, Wolverine, Storm, uh, Black Panther, freaking Venom. And while playing these characters, who did I meet along the way? Jessica Jones and Luke Cage and Iron Fist. This is amazing. I was just so happy to see all these characters together. Like that is really cool. And just looking from the trailers, there's gonna probably be a lot more in store from all those different eras of, of Marveldom together. For once, <laughs> I want a bunch of characters from a franchise together and it's not the Lego version. <laughs> I do respect Lego though. Appreciate Lego, especially since they uh, sent me to Star Wars Celebration. Check out that video if you haven't seen it. Uh, they're really cool, but this is cool. Let me know please if the other Marvel Ultimate Alliance games are good as this one was because I just had so much fun with this. I really enjoyed this. I'm so mad that I missed out on this franchise cause I like it a lot. And I'm assuming that with the four players, if you have like couch co-op that you can have other people control other players, which that's cool if that's the case, but I don't care. I I'm a lonesome. I could play it by my lonesome. I got a lot of stuff to play. Should I just never work again and just play video games for the rest of my life? I think that's the only way I'm gonna be able to keep up with all these games. I just can no longer work. <laughs> I'm just gonna have to be on Twitch all day long, just playing games. I think I'd be okay with that. I did not play Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. I saw it was there, but it was the one game where if you want to play it, you had to take off the controls and do like Joy-Con, and I just didn't want to deal with that at the time. But I saw the trailer and I saw other people playing it. Looks cool. Uh, it's fine. It's gonna be Mario Sonic Olympic stuff. That's cool. And then of course the Nintendo conference in general I won't get too much into that because I already did reactions to both the Nintendo E3 conference I made a video about that and of course I made a dedicated video to the big announcement of Banjo Kazooie being in Smash Brothers. Banjo freaking Kazooie in Smash! <laughs> I can't believe it. Oh gosh, that rare replay. Can we please get that rare replay now on Nintendo Switch? If Banjo-Kazooie is going to be in Smash, we got to get the Banjo-Kazooie games on the Nintendo console again. Come on, Microsoft. We already opened the door. Keep walking through. So those are my thoughts about Nintendo at E3. Thank you so much for watching this video. And please tell me in the comments what were your favorite Nintendo E3 moments. And be sure to check out my other videos talking about E3 as well as just my other videos in general. Thumbs up this video if you like it. And also subscribe to this channel if you like what's going on here. Because I make videos a lot and when I really need to be playing all these video games I keep talking about I talk about the video games more than I'm actually playing them I love it like a play cousin I'm out of 5,000